Okay, we're on page 43, and we're going to do pretty much the same stuff that we did on the previous page, except um, a couple different types of questions here. For example, in question number three, we're actually going to graph these and then compare the solution to the graph as well. So uh, let's take a look at the beginning part here, step one. We're going to multiply the equations to make the coefficients match either the x or the y variables. So taking a quick cursory glance at these two equations here, let me zoom in here. Um, I am going to actually work with the y's because I can tell if I just multiply the the bottom equation by 4 or negative 4 that is um, it can change the whole thing to eliminate the y's a lot easier than multiplying the top by 2 and bottom by 3 so uh, let's go ahead and multiply this by negative 4 so I'm going to multiply negative 4 times 2x plus y equals negative 8 so when I do that I do end up with what is this negative 8x minus 4y equals 32 positive 32 so um, so that's going to be, those are going to be my two equations, right? Negative 3, ooh, that's kind of ugly. Negative 3x plus 4y equals 12. For the top equation, the bottom equation is going to be negative 8x minus 4y equals 32. So those are the two equations that I'm working with. Uh, and then we're going to add or subtract the two equations here. Um, me, I'm gonna. I'm too lazy. I'm gonna copy, paste. And if you're writing, you won't have this feature. But uh, that's why I'm teaching this class, and you're not. Negative uh, three x minus eight x. If we add those together, we get negative eleven x. On the other hand, here we get forty four. Divide both sides by negative eleven. We get x equals negative four. And then we're going to solve for the variable that is left. So I'm going to plug in negative 4 into the top of the bottom equation. Let's go with the bottom equation. So instead of x here, I'm going to put negative 4 plus y equals negative 8. So this is going to be negative 8 plus y equals negative 8. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Yeah. And y, in this case, is going to be 0. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So my solution is negative 4, comma, 0. So we want to graph the two equations. So taking a look at both equations here, we're going to have to change these two equations into slope-intercept form just to make it easier to graph. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and do that because that's not going to take too long. So equation 1, I'll, I'll make it in blue, negative 3x plus 4y equals 12. Let's add 3x to both sides. 4y equals 3x plus 12. Divide both sides by 4. y equals 3 fourths x uh, plus 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we're going to go with that. And then let's do the other equation in green. I'm just going to do it on the other side over here. 2x plus y equals negative 8. And, uh, and again, I'm getting the equation from up here. So let's change this into slope intercept form just by subtracting the 2x from both sides. I get y equals negative 2x minus 8. So let's go ahead and graph those two equations here. Let's do the blue one first. Um, so this tells me the starting point is at 3 and my slope is 3 over 4 so I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3 and over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 so let's just go with that uh, something like that like that or so get a little bit longer, how about that let's move it over so there's that first equation and then let's do the green one <coughs> starting point is negative 8 which is actually off the graph but let's eyeball it kind of right there and then slope is negative 2 so in this case we can't go down 2 into the right one so I'm going to go up 2 into the left one up 2 and left one up 2 left one up 2 left one up 2 left one all right so Close enough. Let's make sure it all kind of lines up like, like this. As best as we can. Right? So the solution is going to be right here at negative 4, comma, 0. 
just like we figured right here. All right, so our algebraic solution lines up with the uh, graph graphical solution. Okay. So question number four, we have to know we have to figure out which system of equations generates two lines that intersect at this at this point negative one comma negative one. So move this out of the way actually. We're gonna actually have to do this a couple times because. Um, we want to know is, it, is so I mean actually there's there's more than one way to do this right we can actually plug in this solution into all of these different equations and see what um, see which one of these comes out with a true statement for both or we can just go ahead and solve all of them um, I think we know enough to solve all of them so that's what I'm gonna do actually so let's go ahead and start with this first one um, I can tell just by looking at it I'm gonna change the x values so I'm gonna multiply the the bottom equation by 7. So the top equation is going to stay the same. 7x plus 20y, I'm assuming, equals 14. And then this bottom equation, I'm going to multiply this by 7, that by 7, and this by 7. And I end up with negative 7x plus 35y equals negative 14. Uh, oh yeah, negative 14. Okay, and then if we go ahead and solve this um, and add these together, this goes away. This is going to be 55y equals, what is this, 0. And then divide both sides by 55. And look at this. We don't have to deal with it at all. y equals 0. Okay, so this is kind of nice. And this tells us y equals 0. This is not, even without solving for x, I can tell that this is not going to be the case. So a is not our choice here. Okay. So I'm going to actually delete all this. Let's get rid of all that. And because we just need the room, delete. Let's do the next one here. So for this next set of equations here, uh, I'm going to change the y's because I can multiply the top equation by 7. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's multiply this entire top equation by 7. So I'm going to multiply this by 7, this by 7, and this by 7. So 7 times 2x is 14x. And I'm, oh, let me, let me clarify one thing. Let's multiply by negative 7 because I want to make the top equation positive 7y. So uh, negative 7 times 2x is negative 14x. Uh, negative 7 times negative y equals positive 7y. And then negative 7 times negative 3 is going to be positive 21. And then the bottom equation is going to stay the same, minus 7y. And again, I multiply the top by negative 7 because that way we have a positive 7 and a negative 7 that will eliminate each other. So this goes away. Um, negative 14x plus negative 10x gives me negative 24x. And 21 plus 3 is 24. Divide both sides by negative 24. And... Look at that, x equals negative 1. So our x values are the same. So this is a contender. So let's keep going and solve for y. So I'm going to plug negative uh, 1 in for the x. So 2 times negative 1 minus y equals negative 3. And again, I'm going with this first equation. That's where we're plugging this in. Negative 2 times negative, or sorry, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus y equals negative 3. Uh, I'm going to add 2 to both sides negative y equals negative 1 and then we'll just switch the sign so y equals 1 so our answer in this case is going to be negative 1 comma 1 which is what we're looking for or oh, hold on negative 1 comma ooh that's not what we're looking for let me see did I do that right um, plug in negative 1 minus y minus 3 okay add 2 to negative 2 to both sides negative one switch signs okay yeah so it's not what we're looking for okay not B okay uh, let's go ahead and go with question C or let me get rid of all this first let's go with C uh, I want to switch okay this one's hmm this one's not gonna be fun <coughs> let's um, Let's go ahead and work with the x's here. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by 4. Or actually, no. Change my mind. Let's work with the y's because those are already opposite. So I minimize as much thinking as possible. So I'm going to 
uh, multiply the LCM of 8 and 9, it's probably going to be just 72, good old 72. So I'm going to multiply the, the top by 9 and the bottom by 8. Let's do that. So, so 9 times 7 and so on and so forth. So 9 times negative 7 is negative 63x. 9 times negative 8 is negative 72y equals 9 times 9 is 81. And then we'll distribute that 8. 8 times negative 4x is negative 32x. 8 times 9y is 72y. Uh, 8 times negative 22 is, what is that, 16, 176, or negative 176. Uh, let me just double check that on a calculator. 22 times 8. Yeah, negative 176. Let's go ahead and add all this together. The y's will go away. In the x column, we'll have negative 95x <coughs> equals, ooh, good lord, 81 plus negative uh, 176 gives me negative 95. Well, that's kind of nice. x equals, divide both sides by negative 95, you get x equals 1. Okay, and that, we can stop there. That is not our x value, so not C either. So let's see if it's going to be D. Um, going with D, let's see. Um, I'm going to change the x column here. And we're going to multiply the top equation by 5 and the bottom by 2. And they're both opposite already, so we don't have to fiddle with uh, negative numbers there. So 5, 5 times 2, x, 8, y, and 6. So 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times 8y is 40y. And then 5 times 6 is 30. And then we're going to multiply the 2 with all those inside as well. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10x. 2 times negative 20y is negative 40y. And ne uh, 2 times negative 15 is negative 30. And, ooh, look at that. 0 equals 0. Look at that. So what that means, we haven't actually encountered this. Uh, we've encountered one where um, you might come out with an untrue statement. In this case, they're both 0. It, it looks like a true statement. But what's happening here is you have the same basic line right on top of each other. So this, in this case, is infinite solutions. Um, but we don't want infinite solutions. We only want one solution at 1, 1. So... Uh, it's not this one either. So if I had to guess, I think whoever made this credit made a mistake. Um, uh, I would say your choice probably was B, or either I made a mistake. I'll have to go back and check. But um, but the correct choice was uh, was none of the above, actually. Okay, let's move on to the next page uh, where we have a context here. Page 45. Okay, I'll let you read that ex explain part there. But in uh, page 45, we have five donuts and three hot chocolates cost $11. Two donuts and two hot chocolates cost $6. And so we come up with this system of equations here. How much does each item cost? So let me see. Um, so it looks like X is the donuts. And um, uh, Y are the hot chocolates. The hot cho I'm going to try choco. Okay, so anyway, I want I just want to keep that straight in my head. Um, so if we're working with this, 5x plus 3y equals 11. 2x plus 2y equals 6. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and work with... Uh, let's just work with the x's. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this top one by 2, and I'm going to multiply this bottom one by 5. In fact, let me change the color. Let's work. Oops. Let's let's work with the ones we're multiplying by. Uh, it's a different color. Let's go with let's go with blue. Okay. So this blue here is going to get distributed again to everything inside. So let's do this. For two times five x is ten x. Two times three y is six y. Ooh, hold on. I'm going to multiply this. Oh, let's just keep going. Equals uh, 2 times 11 is 22. I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by negative 5, just because I want one of these to be negative. So negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x. Negative 5 times 
positive two y is negative ten y, and then uh, negative five times six is negative thirty. Okay, so the x's eliminate each other, and so we're left with negative four y equals negative eight. Divide both sides by negative four, and I'm left with y equals two. I don't want to keep boxing those. It, y equals two, and then we got to find the x value here. So we found the cost for the hot chocolates here. So um, let's plug two back into the y. Five x plus three times two equals eleven. Five x plus six equals eleven. Subtract six from both sides. Five x equals five. Divide both sides by five. X equals one. So. How much does each item cost? Well, donuts are a dollar each, right there, as shown by there. And then the hot chocolate is two dollars each. Okay. Uh, question number two. John and Jen went to the farmer's market to buy fruit. John bought three boxes of oranges and nine boxes of cherries for $75. Okay, yeah, Jen bought eight boxes of oranges and five boxes of cherries for $67, and this is the equation they came up with. So let, let's do that. Um, so X's are oranges, and um, Y are the cherries. So let's work with that. 3X plus 9Y equals 78. 8X plus 4Y equals 58. Um... Let's multiply. Let's work with the x's again. We're going to multiply this by 8, and we're going to multiply this by 3. Okay, so let's distribute that, and let's work with the negative 3, just so we have negative, or sorry, opposite x values, x coefficients. 8 times 3x is 24x. 8 times 9y is 72y. And then 8 times, oh good lord, 78 times 8. That's a huge number, 6624. And then we'll do the bottom equation. 3 times, or negative 3 times 8x is negative 24x. Negative 3 times 4y is negative 12y. And then 3 times 58 is uh, negative uh, 174. So x's will eliminate. Here we have 60y equals. Or is it 624 minus 174? 450. And then if we divide both sides by 60, you have y equals 750. So your cherries cost um, $7.50. So we're going to plug that back into either one, the top or the bottom. Uh, in fact, let me move this real quick. From here, so cherries cost 750. Let's plug 750 in for one of the y's. 3x plus 9 times 7.5 equals 78. 3x equals what is that? 9 times 7.5. 60. Oh, I don't know. Why I wrote equals. Plus 67.5 equals 78. And then we're going to subtract 67.5 from both sides. So 78 minus 67.5. You end up with 3x equals 10.5. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 3.5. So what that means is oranges cost 350. Their friend Denise showed up late and wants two boxes of oranges and three boxes of cherries. How much is it in total? Well, it's going to be two boxes of oranges, which cost three fifty, and three boxes of cherries, which cost seven fifty. So we want the total. Well, that should be easy enough. This is seven dollars plus uh, seven fifty times three gives me twenty two point five, and altogether we are spending twenty nine dollars and fifty cents.